Angel, thanks very much indeed. Now, uh, Mick Green has sent us a message on Facebook to say, I remember Walter O'Brien from Kieran's College. He was there for a time with his older brother, Michael, I think it was. Uh, Walter was always a nice lad and at the time, none of us had any idea how smart he really was. Um, And I imagine it wasn't that easy to move county and then start a new school and Kieran's was a tough atmosphere for someone who was as cerebral as Walter. I'm delighted that he's gotten on so well for himself. Now from child prodigy who grew up on a farm between Callan and Kilmana in County Kilkenny to IT genius who's the subject of a hit new CBS drama Scorpion. Walter O'Brien, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Walter O'Brien? And where are you? And it's lovely to talk to you after all the talk we've been doing about you. Well, yeah, I just discovered I've been uh, under discussion and I didn't know it. Um, It's about 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm in Los Angeles. And Walter, you've come to enormous prominence because of this extraordinary story and we've been hearing um, some excerpts from the trailer for Scorpion which I think airs in September um, on uh, on CBS and is just getting so many hits um, but we've been finding out so much about you but also the rest of the world has and I gather you've had m- massive numbers of requests for interviews. Um, yes, so certainly it's heating up as we get closer to the time. Uh, about a week or so ago, we uh, launched the show, the first public uh, showing of the show at Comic-Con, which is a convention for about uh, 150,000 people down in San Diego. And we had a sold-out uh, audience for the premiere, about 5,000 people in the room. And um, we seemed to get a very positive reaction from it all around. So that's kind of kicked off uh, the, the storm of press. And, um, yeah, I'm just I'm trying to get my day job done while I uh, get back to folks as, as quickly as I can. And, Walter, how do you feel about all this fame? It's it's a far cry from going to St. Kieran's College and, indeed, we gather CBS in Callan as well in the 1990s? Right, yes. And, well, I've been... Uh, I've been over in L.A. now about 15 or 16 years and um, in university in England before that. So I left Ireland a while ago. And um, I've been on evening news a few times. And quite a few different press cover different aspects of things we've achieved and done. We won the most innovative products of the year awards and worked on the war games for Afghanistan and stuff like that that got leaked to the press. But... Um, Certainly, this the TV show is is more, um, I guess, capturing a wider audience, and probably for a longer period of time. Walter, today so I, I, I was on, on set today filming the fourth episode. So we're working with the writers actively to create the first thirteen episodes now. Amazing. Say ahead of the deadlines. And Walter, today is the day that the Leaving Search results uh, are out this morning um, in Ireland. Uh, do you remember your leaving search results? Were you in Kieran's College? Do you remember the points you got? I was in Kieran's. I remember getting them because everyone was pretty nervous that day. In terms of what I got, uh, I can remember very little of it other than I was very bad at Gaelic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Walter, will you talk to us about... Is, is it real that, you know, you hacked into um, one of the uh, U.S. government sites at the age of 13? Will you tell us about that period in your life? And is it true that the CIA or somebody like the CIA came to your house in Callan? Well, all I can say uh, is in terms of what's everything that's in the show, it's all based on, on reality. It's all based on uh, the stories of, of what's happened and the different missions we've gone on. And I'd say in the pilot, about 70 or 80% of it is true in terms of what happened and the lives at stake and, and how we solved it. But I, I can't go into specifically which, which things are happened and which things didn't happen. But yes, I, at 13, I was using computers and I was on the ARPANET and I was hacking. And, and, um, and did the CIA... Was, uh, a, a, a year or two after that, I was paid by banks 
to hack banks and check their and test their security. And how did they find out about you? Um, well, it was pretty easy back then because you were on a very slow dial-up modem and you were using your home phone number, um, which is the only way to get online. So um, it was it's pretty easy in terms of catching a hacker if you just look up the phone number and reverse it. And did somebody so I, arrive at I was, you? I was better at hacking than I was at hiding my hacking. <laughs> and um, did 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 somebody in authority end up coming to your door? Because there's talk of um, huge limousines arriving out to Callan. <laughs> um, I did meet authorities, and those authorities are still my customers to these day to this day. But. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can't be any more specific about it than that. Uh, you'll have, just have to watch the show and see all the flashbacks <laughs> and see how it plays out. But what about the Boston bombers? Is that something that you can tell us something um, about? Uh, only from the point of view of, uh, uh, I think if you hit up our website, you'll see me on the evening news where I explain it in a lot more detail. But the kind of technology that we produce at Scorpion um is used from drone warfare to fighter jets to satellite imagery, and the, it's the same technology used for the analysis they do in the Boston bombing. How do you know which videos to look at, which videos are irrelevant, how do you spot suspicious behavior, doing flow dynamics, etc. And we do that kind of work for the Department of Justice, and our, our technology is licensed by them. You, you've you got, um, a, 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 like, an enormous IQ, Walter, don't you? Yeah. That's one way of putting it. Do you want to tell us what it is? Oh, it's, it's reasonably well published. It's 197. Mm. It's uh, one in 1.47 billion people. Right. And, um, but, uh... That's uh, not all it's cracked up to be. It's a lonely place to be in terms of trying to uh, understand the world and find others that you can that can empathize with you and you with them. And that really was an issue for you in school, I would have thought, and on the day that people are getting their Leaving Cert um, results. But quite a lonely place, as you say, Walter. Was it that, you know, it was hard to talk to other people? Was it that you were never challenged as much as you felt you would need to be, like to be? I think I was probably over-analytical. Um, I probably asked more questions than, than uh, most kids did. And, um, and often didn't get the answers <laughs> to those questions. I think I uh, one trait of prodigies is they turn their brain on or off, depending on whether they like the teacher or the subject. So their results will often be A's and F's, uh, depending on whether they took an interest or not, or saw value in what they were studying. And I think that was true with me. I think I had courses and teachers I liked, where I did very well, and I had other ones where I just turned off, kind of gave up on it. Were, were you unhappy at school? Um, I'd say I was pretty unhappy and, and confused in general, because I, I didn't, didn't necessarily fit in, I didn't know why. Yeah, and you're really interested in, in very bright kids, in prodigies um, now, and I think you do some work in that area, Walter, do you? Yeah, well, I mean, that's primarily what the company's about, is harvesting intelligence from the planet and applying it to those in need. So, you know, we are looking for uh, folks that are extraordinary at what they do or dedicated their life to being the best at one thing. And then we create an incubator or a bubble where they can uh, be productive because generally folks who are extremely good in engineering or technology or math are extremely bad at branding and sales and marketing, accounting, legal and taxes because they don't understand those things and they don't want to understand those things. So we, we've created a situation where those folks can do well, or earn good money, be productive and find and work with people like themselves and all the things they're bad at is handled by someone else. It's all outsourced. So they can just do what they're what they like to do, which is just think and think about thinking. And are you really happy now, Walter, that you're able to shape, you know, your life and find all those people and do stuff that you really want to do? No, absolutely. I've been completely content for over a decade because I built and designed a life that made sense for me. 
and surrounded myself with the kinds of people I want to be around. And the results speak for themselves. We genuinely do good. We genuinely make a difference. Whether it's stopping terrorists, stopping wars, or saving lives, um, there's a great tally there in terms of uh, adding up the, the good that we've done. And uh, we'll continue to do that. And the attention from the show should double or triple the amount of good we've done so far. It'll bring in more geniuses. It'll uh, bring in more problems. and It'll save more lives. And you really feel strongly about doing good. Where where did that, what part of you did that come from, do you think, Walter? I'm not sure. I think most intelligent people would prefer to do good over evil. I think, uh, you know, I believe in evolution. I believe in things getting faster, quicker, cheaper, better. And for us to evolve and get smarter and better about how this planet works mm. and move away from bureaucracy, politics and war. Um, and I, what I've found is the most intelligent people that I've uh, encountered, work with, or work for me come to the same conclusion. And do people listen to you in the States now, Walter? Like, do you have the ear of decision makers, politicians, presidents, congressmen, women? I do when they're in trouble. <laughs> and I am the uh, keynote speaker at every major wealth conference in the world this year. You'll see some of that on the website, scorpioncomputerservices.com. You just click press. But I've spoken with the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. I've uh, been a keynote speaker with uh, the, the chairman of the CIA and the uh, uh, General Wesley Clark, who worked in the Afghanistan War. And um, I'll continue to do those. I've done about half of them. I'll be doing the rest in London and Zurich for the rest of the year. I should be back in Ireland in October. Well, I was just going to ask, do you come back to Callan? Do you come back to Ireland? Ireland could use some of your uh, talents, your genius and your willingness to do good or your want to do good, Walter. Are you backwards and forwards much? No. Um, generally, I prefer to bring family over here. There's more to see and do. Um, I, so I don't come home that often. Um, so maybe every four or five years I'll be back there. And um, no, people in Ireland, many have reached out to me, especially when the financial crisis and the economy crisis happened a few years ago to help out. But it falls on deaf ears in terms of white papers, documents, suggestions on how to uh, restructure or save Ireland or privatize certain aspects of the government, business, and so on. Um, unfortunately, it's same old, same old. They don't listen to you? Yeah, it's a matter of uh, an ability to execute. And, uh, you know, we can talk about it, but for true governance, you need consequence and an ability to execute. And there's very little consequence in Ireland for someone not uh, not executing their job. If they don't execute anything, they generally keep their job. <laughs> You've been keeping an eye on what's been going on in Ireland since you left, Walter. I have, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've seen the ups and downs, and I've seen that when the U.S. catches a cold, Ireland catches the flu. Walter, yeah. it's just such a pleasure talking to you. And I know Emer, who you talked to, was so excited about finding you. And we're really grateful to you um, for, for taking our call. And maybe you'll come visit us um, in the radio station when you're home, if you're home in Callan in October. That would be amazing. All right. I'm not sure of my schedule yet. I'm sure it'll be, it'll be pretty packed when I'm back there. But, uh, you know, uh, ping me on the October 15th and... Uh, <laughs> Well, I'll know by then what's going on. We'll ping you. Listen, before you go, there's somebody who wants to have um, a quick word with you, if that's all right. And his name is uh, John Kwan. Um, John, good morning. Good morning, Sue. Um, it's you great to hear Walter again after all these years. Um, I remember him um, very much when he was a student here. And uh, he certainly... Um, as he said himself, he was different, obviously much more capable than some of the people I suppose he was trying to deal with here. And certainly as far as technology was concerned, much more advanced. But we did struggle to understand him. Maybe not that successfully, but we struggled. And have you watched um, his, his career, John? I, I have, yeah. I'm linked to Walter on LinkedIn. 
Ah. So I I do know what he's up to, insofar as I understand it. But uh, I haven't met him since he left. Uh, but as I say, I try and retain a link with all the past pupils. Um, and I've been linked to him now for at least a year, I'd say, if not two. There you go. Walter, do you want to say hello to your former uh, guidance teacher? <laughs> Hi, John. Long time. <laughs> long time. Long, I'm good. I'm, I retired this year, Walter. Um, took the easy way out in June there, so I'm living the life now, as they say. <laughs> okay. Good. good. <laughs> All right, listen. Well, it's, uh, it's good to hear from you, and thanks for uh, staying in touch. Uh, not at all. Delighted. All right, John, John, thank you very much indeed. Walter, we better let you go because it's three o'clock. Well, it's now 20 past three um, in the morning. We're really grateful to you for uh, taking our call. Just one last thing. As as the genius and the genius who now has created um, a world around him, as as you describe and try and do as much good, do you have a bit of fun? Do you have hobbies? Yeah, um, I collect rare artifacts, so... um I recently I had the, the Golden Gun from the James Bond movie, The Man with the Golden Gun, and the, uh, the helmet from Darth Vader from Star Wars. And uh, I'm into supercars. I collect Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Barabbas, and I race them and drift them and set land speed records with them. Um, and then I have a, a whole bunch of other group activities that are fun from, uh, you know, I still do a little horse riding out here from time to time and salsa dancing and just uh, anything that, that that's fun and different. Well, look, you're a star in so many ways, and I'm sure um, your parents. I mean, you're forty. Are you now thirty nine? Thirty nine. Don't call me forty. Oh, I'm yet. so sorry. We'll never get another interview again. Thirty nine. <laughs> um, Walter, listen, it's been a real pleasure. It's quite an extraordinary story. Um, it really is amazing, and um, you're a lovely man. And thank you so much for talking to us. And people can check out your um, your business. Obviously, it's called Scorpion, and then this um, series, which is going to air on uh, CBS, and hopefully hopefully in Ireland before uh, too long, but uh, on CBS in, in September. Right, September 22nd, it'll be on after Big Bang Theory and before NCIS. And, um, yeah, anyone can follow what I'm doing at uh, scorpioncomputerservices.com. We'll always put the latest big things up in the press section there. Well, great talking to you, Walter. All right, take care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, that's Walter O'Brien, the amazing uh, Walter O'Brien. You can uh, check him out from uh, Callan. Well, moved from Enniscorthy to Callan, went to school in uh, Callan and in uh, Kieran's College um, as well in uh, in Kilkenny. But uh, Scorpion is uh, a new hit CBS drama will air later on in September and uh, is all about war.